Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with ceramic artist Andrea Natkin. She's exhibiting in the seventh annual Evanston Made Group Show. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Lisa. Nice to be here. Thank you so much for allowing us into your space, into your studio. Let's talk about what it is you have in the group show. Well, in the group show, I have a bowl, a ceramic bowl that I made. Um, I, uh, and you know, and it's, 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 it's not a very big bowl, but it is one of my bowls that I create using pretty simple techniques. It's not very complicated. It's got a pretty complicated texture to it, which makes, I feel, it, it makes me think it was really complicated to make it. Yeah, um, well, it's the technique is called scraffito, and it's an ancient technique. It means to scratch in Italian. So basically, and I, you know, we've all, we've, I mean, I shouldn't say we all, but I know I've done scratch art when I was in elementary school. I'd take a crayon and I'd cover a piece of paper with all different color crayons, and then I'd take a black crayon and cover all those other colors with black, and then you'd take a something and scratch through it and you'd reveal the colors underneath it. And it's the same technique, except I'm working on clay and I'm using underglaze and a carving tool. You know, it's just a tiny little carving tool that has a little wire tip that I just, the clay, in fact, I have a piece right here if you wanted to see, this is in oh. progress. <gasps> so I, this is still, this clay is still soft. But I put underglaze on it, let the underglaze dry, and then I use this little tiny tool and I scratch lines in here. And I don't know if I can do something while and then you invite them right through. Ah. But I can draw right through it and make white lines. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So the other technique I use is called um, it's sort of like incising. I don't put black underglaze on the clay. But I scratch, you can see around the rim here. I don't know if you can see that really uh -huh. well. Yeah. There's a line going around it. Well, after I fire it for the first time and it's hard, I'll take black underglaze and I'll stain that line. And then the lines will show up on the white clay. Oh, beautiful. So, you know, this is a piece that's done. This is, this is graffito on a mug or a oh. So that's, so that's the technique. It's, it's not real complicated. I mean, some ceramicists go to great lengths at creating their own glazes and clay bodies and the techniques for firing it. And I, I'm really kind of simple. It's really simple compared to some others. So, um, so that's the piece that's in the show is one of the pieces that's graffito bowls that it's just a drawing that I do. I, you know, I come to ceramics from other disciplines. This is, you know, I'm in like the fourth chapter of my life, right? <clears throat> and I approached this period of my life with, you know, if I don't do it now, when? When am I gonna do the things that I wanna do? And I haven't been in my studio for decades. Um, I've been doing other things in my life. I just, just busy, busy, busy. But so now I'm doing this ceramic stuff that's just got me so engaged and so excited. I can spend hours in my studio, lose track of time and just be here forever. So um, that's a long answer to a simple question. <laughs> what are the other art backgrounds? I mean, is it painting, drawing, or do you work across all mediums? Well, I've done, I did some drawing and printmaking um and a little bit of painting not much but i did a, a i spent about 12 13 14 years doing mosaics so and the kind of mosaics i did weren't your traditional ceramic tile mosaics i used a lot of different materials in fact that's how i sort of got into ceramics again because i i did ceramics when i was in undergrad school but i only took like a semester and i kind of dabbled around in a lot of stuff um but when I was in ceramics, I mean, when I was doing mosaics, I was incorporating ceramics into my mosaics. So I'd make some materials, I'd break it up, I'd put it in, I'd create something new or different, or I'd make an element. And so, so that's really how I 
the circuitous route to ceramics that I, that I got into. And so now all this stuff is very utilitarian. And, and when you compare mosaic making to ceramics, mosaic making is so labor intensive and slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a labor of a lot of love. And it's, you know, you're preparing your materials, you're planning your materials, you're, you're putting in each piece individually to make a, and it's very, very slow. And I, I had a retail business for 12 years where I sold tools and supplies to mosaic artists. And I just, I just wanted to make something so fast. I just wanted to finish something in, you know, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, a couple days. As opposed that's to how minute. long it's taking you to do like a platter with all this graffiti is only taking you 15 minutes to an hour. Well, you know, it's maybe taking me that long to, to, to get, I mean, it's a process in and of itself. I get, you know, the slabs or the materials ready and I, the clay has to get to a certain level of, of dryness in order to be manipulated in the way I want. And I put it in a mold and it needs to stay in the mold until it's movable. And then, so there are stages and steps. Mm -hmm. It's just the overall immediacy. It's like taking a, a pic, picking up a pencil and drawing a line on a piece of paper right. versus drawing a line in mosaic. It, it takes so long to draw a line in mosaic with each little piece trying to describe it. And, and, um, and so the process, I'm finding myself working in a process that's much more immediate than it, it used to be, mm -hmm. comparatively. Mm -hmm. And where's your studio? Where do you fire? I have a studio in my home and I have a kiln in my home. Okay, good. So you don't have to leave the property to do your work. No, unfortunately. And you know, when I sold my business um, in 2018, I ended up buying myself a kiln. My husband was like, like, just go in your studio and start doing the work that you want to do. And so with his support and encouragement, I got myself a small kiln. I put it in a safe space and set up my studio to focus on the ceramics. And so it, I became very self-sufficient very, you know, a couple, about a year, a year and a half, two years ago. I love it. I love this fourth phase of your life. Yes, the chapter. The chapter. It's what is yes. behind you. Um, so this was a plan for a mosaic. This is a was a plan to do a mosaic. It's a drawing. It's a. It's that's what this thing is. I I ended up not doing that. These are just drawings that I've done. But mm -hmm. he, I have a mosaic. This is a. What? This is a mosaic made out of slate, all slate. There's no ceramics in here. I have other mosaics with ceramics. So yeah, so this is my other, iter my other life as an artist. So I've gone through awesome. a lot of phases. Um, and, and you keep going and you keep making. Are you, right. like during this, um, during this shelter in time, where are you at with your practice and your making? Are you like, Bonanza, I'm making all 24 hours a day. Or are you like, this is awful, I can't make? Where are you at? Yeah, I went through both those phases. Okay. I've heard, <laughs> that's a narrative a lot of artists <laughs> seem to say about this, yes. Oh well, yeah, at the beginning, I, I, you know, as at, in March, I was like, oh my God, if we have to shelter in place, this will be great, I'll stay home, I'll love it, I will just love it. And then it started, and for about two months, I couldn't make anything. Mm -hmm. It was like, I could not get myself into the studio. I'd walk in here, I'd walk around, and then I'd leave. <laughs> I'd come back and I'd walk around, I'd move a few things, I'd readjust, I'd look at it, and then I'd leave. And it wasn't, um, I don't know, it wasn't until probably about a month ago that I started to, um, to feel like I could get in here. I, I think the other thing I decided to do, I, I was taking some classes at Lill Street because mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't come by ceramics honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sort of like I came in through the back door. I don't have an education in it. And I'm kind of going by the seat of my pants and I'm experimenting. I don't really know how to do things right. So I decided, okay, well, let's take a class. So I took a class at Lil Street and, and that helped the impetus of getting in my studio and working more. Nice. Um, and, then I, and then I took a couple classes online because there's a lot of places community centers that are offering mm -hmm. online classes with some ceramic artists whose work I admire 
Mm-hmm. And I can take a class for $25 with them. Yeah. And it's just been so amazing um, to be part, to be a part of that. That's exciting. And to continue making, is there like a, do you see yourself having a creative chapter after ceramics? Will you move on to, is there another medium that you are just really yearning to do? I don't know about that yet. Okay, not yet. I'm not, you... sure of that. I'm not there yet. You know, I'm thinking about more sculptural things. I haven't really approached anything in a sculptural three-dimensional mm-hmm. from that perspective. So if anything, I think that is somewhere in the future, doing something okay. more sculptural. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who are you inspired by when you're making? Are you like, I only look at Instagram ceramic artists. Who inspires or informs your work? Well, I think I've been informed by many people over a long period of time. Um, my, you know, the artist inspirations were Kandinsky, uh, Arthur Dove, George O'Keefe, um, even to some extent the Impressionists, Degas and Monet. Um, I think more, you know, if I, and even people that are currently working, whose work I admire, I, you know, and I don't even know them, but I look at their aesthetic and it appeals to me in a way that I can't really verbalize. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, and I, and I can't even tell you who they are, but it's just, and then, you know, my father, my aunt, my grandmother, who were all artists themselves are, you know, they're always in my heart and in my head and, and and encouraging me and, and, and then the natural world around me is a big inspiration. And you, you had mentioned in the answers you sent that you grew up in a very, a lineage of artists. So no one was ever discouraging you. Everyone was always very happy to see you making and creating. Yeah, if something, if, if I had to complain about anything, it would be that no one ever told me I should do something else. <laughs> find, a, find a career that would, I could make a living with and earn a real, you know, you know, you know, an income. And so I just fell back on what I know best and what I feel is my calling. And so that was, you know, go to art school and do the art thing. And, you know, and it's a tough road to, to, to walk down because as a studio artist, there isn't, it it isn't an easy path. Mm -hmm. To mm-hmm. find to, to to make a living, mm-hmm. let's put it that way. So I think that's why I've I've for so long I've not done that. I've always like, okay, how can I make money? How can I do this? I'll go teach, I'll open a business, I'll get a job, and I'll do this on the side. And that, that never worked because there was never any time on the side. Yeah, right. So now there's time. This is the side. This is the side where there's all the time. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in that space. And thank you so much for being a part of the show and being a part of Evanston Made. Yeah, I appreciate I appreciate what you do and, and the opportunity to participate. So thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Andrea.